Hello and welcome to a special broadcast from the war zone in Ukraine. Cities after city completely devastated and shattered. And the threat of a nuclear war is looming large. I'm Abhishek Bhalla and over the next half hour, I will tell you why the world is at the brink of a third world war. Second month of war. Wider conflict fears. Russian warship bogged down as Ukraine gives the spirited fight back. Open nuclear blackmail by Putin. NATO and EU fear getting sucked in. World War III never looked more real. Global doomsday war looms. After the sinking of Russian warship Moskava, Russian state media has already declared that this is the Third World War. Although Putin says that the ship sank due to a fire, Ukraine has taken credit for it. Will this be the big turning point in the already raging battle between the two nations? Take a look at this report. Russia fires a new threat, the biggest, most potent one yet, a threat of World War III. After 53 days of war, Russia has triggered the ghost of a global war. After suffering its biggest military setback on April 13th, Russia has alarmingly declared that World War III has begun already. In a video now going viral on social media, Russian state TV announced that World War III has begun after the sinking of Russian cruiser Moskva. Russia's most formidable warship in the Black Sea was destroyed and Ukraine claimed they sank the ship with anti-ship missile. The Pentagon, however, did not confirm Ukraine's claim, but did not refute it either. The Russian Defense Ministry, meanwhile, has claimed the warship sank due to a fire caused by a storm. The World War III declaration comes after repeated new threats from Russia. Bureau Report, India Today. As the Russian invasion of Ukraine inches towards the third month and no signs of a de-escalation visible, there is a real threat of a global conflict. NATO remains a silent spectator. US and Europe continue to impose sanctions and Ukraine's long-standing demand of a no-fly zone still not being implemented. Here's a report that decodes the ghosts of what a global conflict can look like. The war in Ukraine is now a month old and counting. But not for a moment has this been just Ukraine's fight. From the very beginning of the invasion, it has had all the tremors of the global conflict. Those leading the crisis themselves warn that World War III could be ahead. Russia first triggered the ghost of a global war by placing its nuclear weapons on high alert in February. Following the move with a warning that World War III would have to be nuclear and destructive. Всем понятно, что третья мировая может быть только ядерной. Но обращаю ваше внимание. Everybody understands that World War III can only be nuclear. It is in the heads of the Western politicians that nuclear war is always revolving and not in the heads of the Russians. That is why I assure you that we will not allow any provocations to force us out of the balance. But if a real war against us starts developing, those who carry out such plans must have a think. 
Ну, это, наверное, должны думать об этом те, кто такие планы вынашивает, а они... Amidst Ukraine's sustained pleas for NATO to impose a no-fly zone over the invaded nation, Russia raised the specter again, warning that any such move could trigger a third world war. And that's probably the reason why, despite vehemently condemning Russia, the US or the European Union have rejected Zelensky's demand to declare Ukraine's airspace a no-fly zone. We want to close the airspace because our children are being deliberately killed. Missiles, bombs, jets are flying from the territory of Belarus and Russia. Any move in this direction will be viewed by us as a participation in the armed conflict of whichever side whose territory will pose a threat to our service members. That very second we will view them as participants of the military conflict and it would not matter what members they are. Wars were fought in Iraq, Syria and also between two of the biggest nations, China and India. But never before did the risk of World War III looked as serious as it does now amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. On a military scale, Russia's Ukraine war is limited. Yet the risk of World War III is bigger than ever and could just be a trigger away. Till now, Europe or America have refrained from sending troops to fight against Russia limiting their response to sanctions and military aid. So why is the ghost of another world war so strong? World war is the name given to two multilateral wars that were essentially European. The first world war fought during 1914 to 19 mainly involved Germany, Austria-Hungary and Turkey against the Allies France, the UK, Soviet Russia, Italy, Japan and from 1917, the United States. The Second World War fought between 1939 to 1945 mainly involved Germany, Italy and Japan against France, UK, US and Soviet Russia. As the stakes pile up, as the pressure builds, and as the implications mount for Europe, the Russia-Ukraine war has the potential for a bigger war, both in weaponry and geography. Will NATO be pushed to impose a no-fly zone? And is that the one move separating the world from World War III? Bureau report. India today. Make no mistake, this is no Cold War 2.0. Russia and US are once again going head to head. Nuclear powers are trying to match up with each other, showing their arsenal. We decode how geopolitics will change if this war is to continue for long. Full rudder, reverse starboard engine, rifle rudder, hold back starboard shell, hold back starboard shell. An iconic scene from perhaps the world's most famous Cold War film, harking back to a time of terrifying distrust. Nuclear hair triggers and a world even just a breath away from intercontinental mass destruction. Cut forward a few decades and a very hot war in Ukraine has a cloud of the old Cold War all around it. Sit back 
while we prove to you that we are in Cold War 2.0. Proof 1. Direct US-Russia tension. The first piece of proof, the war in Ukraine has sparked the most high-level tensions between the US and Russia in decades. With both superpowers reviving historic angst to paint each other as global imperialistic aggressors running roughshod over world peace. Did you ask me whether I would call? Oh, I, I, I think he is a war criminal. Proof 2. Big global realignment. The second piece of proof is the global realignment of the international order. Hugely reminiscent of Cold War pressures, complex linkages aside, the world stands masked against Russia, its ally China, a neutral India, with the United States making it clear to nations that they are against Russia or with Russia. The crisis in Ukraine is visible, crafting a new world order. Proof 3. Nuke forces on high alert. The most tangible revival of Cold War tensions is clear in Russia's move to place its nuclear forces on high alert in the wake of NATO movements to help Ukraine. The move by Putin, explained away as a defensive posture by Moscow, has ratcheted up nuclear tensions to dangerous Cold War levels forcing other nuclear nations, by most accounts, to keep their nukes dusted and ready too. Proof 4. Bio-warfare allegations. The allegations of biological weapons laboratories and experimentation with germ warfare are also typical of the Cold War era crossfire. Russia threw the first punch in the current crisis by accusing the US of maintaining bio-warfare facilities on Ukrainian soil. The US hit back saying Putin intends to use bio-weapons of his own and the allegation is just cover fire for his own insidious intentions. Proof 5. Isolation through airspace. With several nations closing their airspace to Russia, the sense of geographic isolation has heightened dramatically in the first few weeks of the Ukraine invasion. With few flights in and out of Russia, the alienation of a superpower is palpable and in many ways is even more than how it was during the Cold War. Proof 6. Moscow unplugged from global economy. The crippling sanctions against Russia haven't slowed Putin's military rumble in Ukraine, but Russian citizens are most definitely feeling the heat. A Soviet-era arrogance that Russia can survive without the global economy is also representative of Cold War-era confidence. The suggestion that the world needs Russia more than Russia needs the world. Proof 7. Mass mobilization across Europe. Perhaps the most visible manifestation of a new Cold War, the readiness of militaries in Europe, across NATO nations and the move of several other countries like Finland to consider joining NATO, creating a spectre of the Russian menace. The suggestion that it's Ukraine today and the other countries next, painting a scary Cold War scenario that goes just beyond the cold. There's real combat taking place in Ukraine for a whole month and counting. One thing is certain, whenever that battle ends, Cold War 2.0 won't end anytime soon. With Shivaru, Bureau Report, India Today. Despite being a signatory to the Chemical Weapons Convention, Russia has often been accused of violating this. And once again, there have been allegations that Russia has been freely using chemical weapons in its invasion in Ukraine. Is Mario Pol the latest victim in Russia's chemical warfare. Take a look at this report. Amid the raging war in Ukraine, Russia has been pulling out some deadly weapons to target civilians in key cities. In the latest, 
Ukraine is claiming that Russia used chemical bombs, specifically phosphorus munition, to target its port city of Mariupol. President Zelensky has even warned his citizens of more chemical attacks. Today, we heard a statement from occupiers confirming they are preparing for a new stage in their terror against us and our defenders. One of the spokesperson of the invaders said they are considering using chemical weapons against the defenders of Mariupol. We take it very seriously. I want to remind world leaders that a possible use of chemical weapons had been already discussed by Russian military. At the time, it meant the reaction to the Russian aggression should have been harsher and faster. Earlier too, Russia was accused of launching illegal white phosphorus bombs, which have been banned under international law for use in civilian areas. These white phosphorus bombs, also dubbed as flaming onion bombs, are horrific weapons which can fiercely burn anything that comes its way. This weapon can cause grave injuries as it quickly fires up in the air, spreads over enormous areas, up to several hundred kilometers, emanating tremendous heat and poisonous smoke. These white phosphorus bombs also have potential to instantly kill. This translucent wax-like substance smells like garlic and ignites around oxygen, causing serious injuries and even death when it comes into contact with skin, is inhaled or swallowed. Studies say the effects of white phosphorus is severe, especially on infants. It causes mortality, cancer and leukemia. It's not just white phosphorus. Russia has an array of chemical weapons in its stock, from nerve agents to choking agents. Each is deadlier than the next. Nerve agents disable the ability to send messages to the muscles and cause paralysis and loss of body functions. Sarin, Navichok, Soman and Tabun are some nerve agents Russia has used in the past. Blistering agents come in gas, aerosol or liquid form and cause the skin to blister on contact. Blistering agents include sulphur mustard that go back to the First World War and nitrogen mustard. Choking agents cause respiratory failure if inhaled or ingested. Chlorine is the most common variety used. Blood agents affect the body's ability to send oxygen through the bloodstream. Hydrogen chloride and cyanogen chloride are blood agents allegedly used by the Kremlin. Russia is one of 193 signatory countries to the treaty banning production, stockpiling and use of chemical weapons. Moscow denies having or ever using such weapons, but past incidents have proved otherwise. Chemical weapons have been the bone of contention in the Ukraine war. Russia has accused Ukraine of having chemical and biological weapons. But given its history, the danger of Russia deploying them is real and present. In fact, Ukraine claims clear evidence of the use of chemical weapons by Russia in Mariupol, where Kyiv says thousands have died. Bureau Report, India Today. Seen as a weak opposition to Russia, Ukraine's fight back has been legendary. It has faced the Russian onslaught and in fact turned it into a graveyard for Russian tanks, aircraft and also soldiers. Not just Ukraine's military but also its civilians came together in giving a befitting reply and taking on the Russian invasion. Civilians training to pick up guns to fight for their country. Fathers and mothers with their teenage children take turns to learn how to operate machine guns. We would like to watch and learn how to use arms to protect our children. 
Ukraine has been training its citizens since the first week of March. They are all preparing for a lengthy war. Uh, I believe that uh, it is just in case, and I won't need this knowledge, but in case like the Russian invasion move further to Lviv, or maybe in case they will launch some missiles to Lviv, and maybe I will need, I would join some medical, you know, med medicine stuff, and do medicine. While ordinary Ukrainians train and prepare to defend their country, the world has gradually but steadily been helping the defender. Faced with a mighty aggressor, Ukraine looks severely out of favor from a military point of view. Yet a country with just two lakh active military personnel has been able to stand up to a behemoth, Russian army, that has sophisticated weaponry at its command. A large part of that fierce resistance comes from the swift transfer of military equipment by NATO and other allied countries. In a first, the 27-country bloc of the European Union signed off a $551 million package to help arm Ukraine. Germany has rewritten its long-standing policy that barred exporting weapons into war zones. Germany sent 1,000 anti-tank weapons 500 Stinger anti-craft defense systems to Ukraine. Within days of the invasion, France reportedly promised to send military aid to Ukraine, but there's no publicly disclosed specifics of it. The United Kingdom has so far sent 2,000 short-range and anti-tank missiles, Saxon armored vehicles and Sky Saber air defense system with 100 military operators. The US so far has been the largest contributor with 1,400 Stinger anti-aircraft missile systems 4,600 Javelin anti-tank missiles, five Mi-17 helicopters, three patrol boats, four counter-artillery and counter-drone tracking radars, 2,000 light anti-armor weapons, 300 grenade launchers and ammunition. They've also sent 600 shotguns and 600 machine guns, 5,000 rifles, 1,000 pistols, 25,000 sets of body armor, 25,000 helmets. The US has so far sent nearly 40 million rounds of small arms ammunition, over 1 million grenades, mortar and artillery rounds, along with 70 Humvees and other vehicles, 6,000 at four anti-armor systems and thousand switchable drones. I'm grateful to US President Biden for new effective aid for our country. You should understand that I can't reveal all the details of this package of aid and others. This is our defense tactic when the enemy doesn't know what to expect from us. Justin Trudeau has been the next big military aid contributor in arming Ukraine after Joe Biden. Canada has sent nearly 4,500 M72 rocket launchers, 1,600 fragmentation vests, nearly 7,500 hand grenades. Other than that, it has also contributed $1 million to buy commercial satellite high resolution and modern imagery, machine guns, pistols and carbines. Canada has sent 1.5 million rounds of ammunition, sniper rifles and various related equipment worth 7.9 million US dollars to Ukraine so far. It has also contributed 19.9 million US dollars in military aid that could include helmets, body armor, gas masks and night vision gears. From Asia, Japan has sent bulletproof vests and helmets to Ukraine and South Korea too has contributed to the war effort. The next door neighbor for both Russia and Ukraine, Poland has reportedly contributed tens of thousands of shells and artillery ammunition, anti-aircraft missiles, light mortars and reconnaissance drones. All three Baltic and Scandinavian countries too have contributed with military aid to arm Ukraine, as has other European countries. Australia and New Zealand have come with major military donations for Ukraine. But for now, all this help from around the world has not been able to convince Putin's army to back down. The war continues and destruction abounds. <laughs> Russia's economy could be severely crippled and impacted due to the multiple 
sanctions imposed by US, EU, Japan and Canada. But Russian President Putin remains unfazed and believes that this is all part of the game and is ready to take on any implications that these sanctions have. As for the progress of the operation, I can often hear questions if we can do it faster. We can. It depends on the intensity of military actions. The intensity of military actions is somehow related to losses, unfortunately. Our goal is to achieve all objectives, minimizing losses. Nothing's changed in Vladimir Putin's world. The country has been hit by the maximum sanctions so far since the world wars. If our partners aggravate the situation in the financial, insurance sphere, in the area of transport, including maritime transport, then the situation will worsen for them, among other things. Food shortages or incredibly high prices on world markets will lead to hunger in regions throughout the world. It's inevitable. The next step would be new wave of migration, including to the Western countries. In Russia, indigenous businesses are eager to fill the gap created in domestic markets after the sanctions pushed Western companies out. Of course, it's good for us all if they leave, because in that case, people will start to be interested in other brands of clothes. They will be interested in Russian brands. Before, when they needed jeans, they would buy it at Zara. Now, they start to look at who is on the market. On a daily basis, some areas in Russia complained of shortage of sugar and salt. Putin's government arranged for special markets to allow people to restock. I don't need much sugar, but it's just that it's not available at all. The sanctions were supposed to hit the Russian economy hard. Ruble fell sharply. Pundits predict doom for Russian GDP, which is modest compared to the USA or the UK. But for the Russian president, who carries a fearsome black briefcase, prepared for any nuke trigger along with him all the time, the end is still not here. Bureau Report, India Today. This is all we have from this special broadcast from War Zone in Ukraine. We'll keep getting you all the updates on the war. Keep watching India Today for more news and updates.